Let's go in a minute, log. Hi guys. Well, it keeps deciding whether it wants to be a beautiful or stormy Monday here in the collapse of everything on this hot, sticky, windy. It is a Monday, February 12th, 2024, which may or may not be President's Day. So my my evil twin was just over on that other channel doing his dump the Trumpy high roundup rant and now I've had to change hats here and uh, it is time for our good news Monday uh, our good news Monday roundup and I'm <laughs> I, I want to talk about Chernobyl Chernobyl wolves uh, center on that, but we have. Um, I'm going to end with the Chernobyl wolves and just get a few of them out of the way. Uh, you can figure out what these first three have to do with uh, the collapse of everything. All right, we have a new law in Madagascar allowing the castration of child rapists. All right, Madagascar's parliament has passed a law allowing for the chemical and in sometimes surgical castration of those found guilty of the rape of a minor. The law has prompted criticism from, uh, well, to coin a phrase, limp dick lefties, uh, over there at those international rights groups, but has found support from activists who say castration is an appropriate deterrent to curb rape culture. Uh, surgical castration will always be pronounced for those guilty of raping a child under the age of 10, <clears throat> cases of rape against children between the age of 10 and 13 will be punished by surgical or chemical castration, and the rape of minors between 14 and 17 will be punished by chemical castration. Offen offenders would also face sterner sentences of up to life in prison as well as castration. So Madagascar uh, sounding more and more, uh, I, I, you don't think of Madagascar as being one of the more progressive intelligent countries on the planet, but as long as we're down there in that general area we're going to go inland to Sub-Saharan Africa, and I will uh, make this short and sweet, but I'm going to say it here on the Good News Roundup, Zambia's, Zambia's worst ever cholera outbreak spirals into an uncontrollable health crisis, and I... Uh, we're not going to get into the particulars of that story, uh, so I won't be called, a, you, you know, a eugenicist and a racist or whatever by cheering on viruses and bacteria, uh, taking out a tiny, tiny fraction of the people that never should have been born. I have, you know, this whole thing with viruses, I, uh, I've been having this ongoing fun little doomer debate with my buddy Michael Campy uh, about viruses. You know, I, 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 I just don't understand why the same people who understand that overshoot that humans overshooting the their ecological boundaries is is the central reason 
that the planet is in the shape that it's in. And then every time something comes along to keep, uh, to, to make some vain attempt so far in these viruses and bacteria's uh, attempts, to bring an, a population in overshoot back into balance, the supposed doomers start screaming and freaking out that a virus or a bacteria or whatever is doing exactly what a virus is supposed to do, and that is bring down a species in overshoot any virus or bacteria that kills humans is a good thing for this planet. Every doomer, every red-blooded doomer needs to be out there cheering on viruses. Anyway, now this last one, uh, I, I found here today on medium.com from Patrick Metzger and I just, my evil twin, just included this story over there in the Dump the Trump Dehive Roundup over on that other channel, but I, I'm, I'm kind of going to repeat if you missed that one, I'm just going to kind of, you know, I, I'm agreeing. Uh, with my evil twin over there in that other channel, a second Trump presidency would mean the end of civilization. And I've been saying it for years. Any doomer who understands that global civilization is one of the linchpins of human overshoot, meaning that global civilization is one of the single biggest threats to the planet and is cheering on the uh, it, it is cheering on the collapse and fall in global industrial civilization should be a, you, you know a, a screaming partisan a, you know champion of Donald Trump because Donald Trump more than any other human on the planet uh, well, with the possible exception of Joe Biden or Vladimir Putin, uh, can bring down global industrial civilization. Donald Trump is the man for the job. Okay, Donald Trump, more than any other human on this planet, has the ability, uh, with, with millions of people uh, behind him, uh, so he will be our next president, so maybe global industrial civilization will fall. So I'm starting to put the uh, Trump, the sequel, in uh, to uh, my, my good news roundup. But another thing they talked a lot about here uh, in this article and, a, and another article in The Guardian uh, talking about this very thing is about if Trump is elected that uh, one thing that he's immediately going to do is is dismantle, abolish, eradicate, whatever word you want to use for it, the, the, this bullshit Inflation Reduction Act uh, that all of these little limp dick lefty greenies uh, ha have been cheering on. Uh, Donald Trump will pull us back out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, good for you, brother. And he will eviscerate this bullshit Inflation Reduction Act. The you know the shining achievement of these little lefty greeny Green New Deal clueless morons spouting this shit. Uh, th this is, is the Inflation Reduction Act is every bit as much of an attack on this country and on this planet 
and then the drill baby drill. And of course, with Joe Biden, uh, we have seen more oil drilled, uh, you know, recently under Joe Biden than Donald Trump ever hit in, in his administration. Uh, so there you go with, uh, with, with uh, Joe Biden, you get the frying pan and the fire. You get drill baby drill and the Inflation Reduction Act giving, I think it's $350 million in subsidies to asphalt and or cement producers. We're going to pave the planet to save the planet, according to Joe Biden. So maybe we will have a little bit uh, less asphalt poured under when Donald Trump reassumes the throne. But anyway, what I really wanted to talk about, and there's several versions of this mainstream media story based on a, a new scientific study that uses all of these uh, 50 cent words. So uh, I've, I've read several of them and I kind of like this one um, from Business Insider. And, and what, what this is, guys, is j just the latest evidence of that I have been saying for years that uh, the Chernobyl human exclusion zone is the greatest uh, good news ray of hopium uh, on this planet uh, that it is the single biggest garden of Eden on the planet. Uh, that it is, it, it is a postcard perfect example of how getting rid of humans, getting rid of humans is the best and only way to save the planet for the rest of our fellow earthlings and that uh, <clears throat> our fellow earthlings would rather deal with ground, with a ground zero nuclear uh, meltdown radiation catastrophe than simply, than, than, than dealing with eight billion humans going along about their business. That uh, there uh, are a hell of a lot more. The ecosystem in Chernobyl is one of the most gloriously healthy ecosystems on this planet. The reason being, it is a human <laughs> exclusion zone, uh, it, it is why. And this is just the latest. So this happened in 1986. So how long has it been? 38 years. So this is Business Insider's spin on a this new this newest uh, scientific research <clears throat> wolves in the chernobyl radiation zone i would call it the chernobyl human exclusion zone developing resistance to cancer says study the uh the little bullets up at top uh the three takeaways Chernobyl wolves are growing resistant to cancer despite their high radiation exposure. The wolves are exposed to six times <coughs> the legal safety limit of radiation for, human, for humans. Decades after the nuclear disaster, wolves are showing genetic dispositions to cancer resistance. Okay. <clears throat> Wolves in Ukraine's Chernobyl area are developing resilience to cancer. The Society for Integrative and Comparative Biology reports a nuclear disaster followed the explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in April 1986. 
in what was then part of the Soviet Union and probably will be again shortly, it released a large quantity of cancer-causing radioactive material, which is exactly what's going to happen when humans do go extinct. That 435 of these things, we're going to have 435 Chernobyls at one time. Today, it's let meaning the nuclear disasters legacy still lingers in the radioactive soil and water in Belarus, Ukraine, and Western Russia. The gray wolves in the highly radioactive area are still exposed to 11.2 milligrams of radiation every day more than six times the legal safety limit for humans. However, recent research conducted by Kara Love, an evolutionary biologist and ecotoxicologist at Princeton University shows how these wolves have adapted to survive in a radioactive environment. And of course, wolves are apex predators. So this is implying that all of the uh, animals, that, that the radioactive animals, that the radioactive wolves are eating are also radioactive and somehow they are finding a way to adjust to it, to deal with it. Uh, Love's research established uh, that wolves in Chernobyl have altered immune systems, quote, similar to cancer patients undergoing radiation treatment, close quote. This is important as scientific research reveals more about radiation uh, resistance, the potential for innovative therapies, and, and now they're now they're talking, so what they're talking about here is why this is such good news is because it's going to help humans. And then it, then it goes all about the humans. Uh, I, 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 some of these articles, that's all they want to talk about. It, 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 from here on, it's all about the humans. How can we look at this and figure out how this is going to help humans? I don't give a fuck how it's going to help humans. I'm cheering on the wolves and, and the bears and the and the bison and the elk and the horse wild horses and the lynx uh, and, and all of the rest of these animals that are are despite being illegally literally irradiated, they're somehow breeding and, and raising generations of, uh, 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 of our fellow earthlings inside this human uh, exclusion zone. Uh, Love and her team visited the, the exclusion zone in 2014, equipping wolves with radio collars to track their movements and monitor their radiation exposure in real time. <clears throat> After the worst nuclear disaster of all time released cancer-causing radiation and irradiated debris into the power plant surrounding environment, the area was rendered uninhabitable for humans. About 350,000 humans were evacuated from the region after the explosion. So this was 350,000 humans going about their business. Just going about their business, doing what 350,000 humans do. Uh, so out with them, and now almost 40 years after the disaster resulting in the evacuation of 350,000 humans, wildlife like the wolves and horses forests 
and fungi have recolonized the affected zone, many studies suggest that animals are thriving in the zone because of the lack of what? One word. Many studies, and then they link this to other studies I've been reporting, many studies, and now this one, suggest that animals are thriving in the zone because of the lack of humans. There you go. Uh, this is Tim Christopherson, uh, head of the United Nations Environmental Program. <clears throat> the exclusion zone is a fascinating example of nature's power to rebound from degradation, otherwise degradation meaning humans, and Jim Smith, an environmental scientist, told National Geographic, quote, nature flourishes when humans are removed from the equation, even after the world's worst nuclear accident, close quote. And this is one of the tiny rays of 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 hope that I have is that uh, after humans are extinct, these 435 Chernobyls blow off at once. It's not going to be good for a few years, but uh, I honestly believe, and every bit of research supports me on this, uh, at least with Chernobyl and Fukushima and Three Mile Island and the ones we don't know about, uh, Hanford Nuclear uh, Dump up there in Washington State, every one of these reports from these human exclusion zones show uh, that our fellow earthlings are going to find a way to recolonize that. The, the, the forests and the fungi are going to start moving back in and rapidly evolving ways to survive uh, in, in these uh, radiation zones. So the, the, these, the, these people who claim that humans need to be kept from going extinct because if humans go, so do all of the nuclear power plants go. And while this is true, uh, every evidence that this college-educated journalist is, sees is uh, if, if I were a wolf, uh, I, I, I'll take my chances uh, with nuclear meltdown uh, over just, just trying to live with humans going about their damn business. Anyway, so we do have some good news coming from the V ground zero epicenter of good news on the planet, which is the Chernobyl uh, nuclear meltdown zone, otherwise known as the human exclusion zone. But now that uh, we've shared some good news, I'm going to go... Uh, eat us a dead chicken. Get out there and uh, spread the news. The sky is falling. Well, you still can, my guys.
Okay, little dog, we're done.